You are listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. The Archaeology Podcast Network is sponsored by Codify, a California benefit corporation. Visit Codify at www.codifi.com. This is episode 73 for the 14th of March, 2017. This is Chris Webster, and on today's show, we're going to learn about Newberry Cave. All right, I'm here at the Society for California Archaeology meetings in Fish Camp, California, near Yosemite, in the very noisy exhibit hall with Dr. Alan Gold. How's it going? Pleasure. And we're going to learn about uh, Newberry Cave and then Dr. Gold's recent research and articles about Newberry Cave. So first tell us, what is Newberry Cave? Yeah. Where is Newberry Cave? Well, it's a pleasure and honor to be on your podcast network, first of all. Thank you. And uh, Chris and I go way back. We uh, <laughs> have worked together in a lot of projects, and it's exciting to help him in this uh, venture. Yes. Independent of that, Newber- Newberry Cave is a dry cave that exists in the eastern Mojave Desert. If you're traveling along on the highway, I think it's 15, going out towards Las Vegas, you'll see a sign that says Newberry Springs. Well, if you uh, were so bold as to leave the highway and go down a drainage and then hang a left up a canyon that looks like you shouldn't go up it and hike up it, there is an uh, enormous bus-sized boulder that popped out of the side of a rhyolite hmm. volcanic shelf to create a cave. And in that cave, about 50 years ago, the San Bernardino County Museum and about 50 or more volunteers were uh, kind enough to excavate the uh, matrix within this cave. That's what Newberry Cave is. And, and what is the, um, what's been found in Newberry Cave so far? What is the historical significance or prehistorical significance? Well, you know, there aren't that many truly dry caves in California. Or if there is, they haven't been extensively excavated. And for our listeners who are a general audience, yeah. what's, what's a dry cave and what's the, what's the antithesis of that? What, you know, a wet cave? Archaeologists typically work in open-air sites where the perishables, those things that we typically figure do not preserve, such mm-hmm. as textiles, mm-hmm. um, organics, and, and other kinds of material culture that we don't have an opportunity to really see, display, understand, collect, discover, all those things. Yet in a dry cave, in the environs of a cave, which doesn't receive much in the way of moisture, does, isn't open to the elements, many pieces of aboriginal prehistoric material culture that would otherwise erode and be destroyed are in fact preserved. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now that we have that context, what has been found at Newberry Cave prior to what you've done recently, and what, is that, what does that mean? What, what are the, who are the people that left that stuff there? Well, way back when, when they excavated it, one of the things they discovered was there were hundreds of paintings on the outside of the cave, principally in green, but also uh, uh, a single one in, in black and others in white or red. But in the cave itself, there was a tremendous amount of wood rat debris and other sorts of organic elements. Interfingered in the matrix of the cave, it was filled up to the very rim. One of the more interesting elements that were found there was a dozen nearly complete split twig figurines and about a thousand fragments. These split twig figurines are effigies, call them fetishes if you will, that represent a a large game animal, uh, undubitably the bighorn sheep. Mm -hmm. And these participated in a a magic, a a ceremonial, a ritual relationship for the cave dollars. Okay, and and what uh, what kind of time period are we talking about here? Well, we're, we have, we're blessed because we have two sets of data that helps us to actually pinpoint very precisely the age of the cave. One is we have a, a large inventory of time diagnostic or time sensitive projectile points that are only of the Elko and Gypsum cave periods. So the 
The cave itself dates to the Newberry period, given for the same, and they only range from 2000 BC to 1000 BC, a thousand year period. Okay. Okay, that's number one. The other thing we have about eight to 10 radiocarbon dates that all overlap and all pinpoint this exact period. Not, never later, never earlier. So just hmm. this 1000 year window on prehistory. Okay, so getting to the present, what's the latest things that you've done to, uh, regarding Newberry Cave? Well, if I'm going to be honest with you, I only visited the cave once in my life. <laughs> I only saw it once and it kept my interest for 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, one of my colleagues asked me to write up my research, and so I did. For the movie Talking Stone, which is Rock Art of the Kosos, we went and visited the Newberry Collection at the San Bernardino County Museum. And I think for the first time, any researcher got to actually touch, see, videotape, and photograph and still every piece of artifacts, every artifact, every eco-fact that was found in that cave was viewed and photographed. Okay. At that, so some of the more interesting things that were found there is hundreds of dart shaft fragments. These are made of phragmites or arrow weed, some being painted. So we found the dart shafts from the native hunters. We also found quartz crystal that was painted. We found pigment groups, masses of pigment, both in green and red. We found a group of feathers that were entwined with cordage and a bighorn sheep turd, a piece of uh, excrement that was wound around with a piece of sinew uh, and used either as a talisman or some sort of a good luck charm that was there in the cave. Okay, so having seen all these things, what, the hell, uh, what the hell does it mean? Yeah, what does it all mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what is most fascinating about this cave and others is that I had the blessings of a, of a couple, Nancy Coulomb and Alan Schrodel, who did a fantastic piece of research in American antiquity, synthesizing and hypositing what was going on with this split twig figurine mm -hmm. complex. It's only one site in California that has split twig figurines, Newberry Cave. But there are other sites, about 15 to 30 sites, that have those split twig figurines. They're in Nevada and Colorado and Utah. What they thought, and the only analog, the only consistent pattern that exists in the world of forager, hunter-gatherer cultures that produce such effigies is that they have what they call an increase clan-like activities of totemism, where mm. they believed that, that, that they were descended from an animal-human figure and they would recharge the power and reverence this connection to this figure by creating depictions of animals. Over, wow. over time, an intergenerational transfer of these artistic renditions. Okay, well, um, your latest papers, is that's all discussing these, these it, theories then? It does, it, I have a paper published overseas that discusses this. Happily, the uh, pictures are also in color. Okay. And also they see the Talking Stone film that's available uh, uh, through the um, Bradshaw Foundation or through the California Rock Art Foundation, they will see about a three minute vignette and some, ex some explanation about this cave. Okay, awesome. We'll check out the links in the show notes um, to the video and the other resources mentioned and uh, learn some more about Newberry Cave. That's it for this episode of ARC 365. Please share this episode on your social media sites so others can have fun and learn about archaeology too. Please consider a donation to ARC 365 by sponsoring an episode for just $35. You can find the sponsor page at www.archaeologypodcastnetwork.com forward slash sponsor ARC 365. Thanks and have a great 2017 with the Archaeology Podcast Network. The song Storm Diggin was written, performed, and recorded by Steve Webster. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.
www.archaeologypodcastnetwork.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com.